Hello, my name is Doug Digital, and in this video, I want to ask you a question. How do you do a disk defragmentation of the mind? So to start with, I'm going to talk to you about an open loop. Now, an open loop is something that was coined by David Allen, uh, famous for writing the book Getting Things Done. Now, he refers to an open loop as a thought process in the mind or a thought in the mind that doesn't have a an action assigned to it. So this can be any thought in your mind about anything where you don't know what to do with it. It's kind of it's just floating. And you all know that feeling when you're in the shower, you're on a long drive, you're on a long, long walk or you're in the evening and your mind just starts filling up with things you should do, you could do, you need to do all these things. And some of them and most of them don't have uh, an objective to them. They don't or rather they don't have a next thing to get it along. So you just keep going around in a loop, an, an open loop that is a roundabout. It's got lots of different journeys and you don't have a signpost to tell you where to go next. And so back to the idea of a defragmentation on a hard disk drive. The idea with that is that as you fill up your hard disk drive with data, it becomes disparate and it just gets dumped here, there and everywhere. Much like your mind, these thoughts keep coming in and you don't know what to do with them. You don't know how to allocate them. So it keeps filling up and filling up and filling up, filling up. Now, unlike a, uh, a hard drive, um, well, much like hard drive actually, rather than us finding it hard to discover the data, our body just gets tired, our mind gets stressed and it, it feels like it gets slower. It's like, oh. we get sluggish and we get slow to respond. So how do you do a disk defragmentation of the mind? How do you resolve these open loops floating in your mind? So just to give you an example of some open loops, you need to lose weight. You want to get a promotion. You need to get closer to your family member. You need to improve the relationship with your loved one. You need to go out and find a loved one. You need to improve your health and fitness and well-being. And you need to read more. You need to play more. You need to do this. You need to do that. It gets suffocating, doesn't it? All these questions of need more, want more, should do, don't have an answer. And that is the purpose and the objective with our mental defrag. And we're going to do that by doing what we call a mind sweep. A mind sweep is something that you would do once per week, possibly more, possibly less, with the idea being that the more necessary it is, the more frequent you do it. A mind sweep is where you think about the core areas of your life that are valuable to you, and you use what you would refer to as a trigger list, a series of questions to prompt you into thinking about the different areas of your life to acknowledge the open loops. So let's say fitness. You would get a notebook, get a pad, and you would say, OK, fitness. And in your mind sweep, you would write down all the open loops that come to your mind. No matter what they are, no matter how big, no matter how small, you just write them down. You just get them out of here, put them into this space. Fitness, need to lose weight, need to gain weight, want to build muscle, want to lose body fat, want to do this, want to do that, want to be able to run a distance, want to be able to lift a weight, want to be able to feel good, to look good, want to compete, want to do this, want to do that. Whatever it is, just write it down. Get it out and put all that data and collate it and allocate it onto your page in one area so your mind can see it, you can process it and you you know what's going on in here. Get it out. You do that, the different areas of your life. Now, much like a disc defrag, this can take a while, but it's very, very important. So when you have all those ideas, you've done your mind, so you clear the desk. And this is also paperwork as well. So you pull papers. Ah, yeah, there was this note from the doctor and there was this note for this project. And ah, OK, just get it. Get it on paper. Just, just or on your notebook or on your, your note note taking app, just get it down written. And that process in itself is really empowering. Oh, well, empowering in a sense that you feel like you're taking ownership, you're collecting all the data, you're seeing it all, which gives you a sense of clarity. Now, there's a next layer to that, and this is where you combine this with a weekly review. So the objective of a weekly review from a, a David Allen getting things done perspective is to acknowledge all the areas of your life, the projects, the horizons that you're working towards, your goals and objectives and the little projects, and the little tasks to get you there. So you start with a long horizon of where your tra trajectory is. You're in a plane, you're looking into the horizon. 
rather than fighting in the day-to-day. And in the weekly review, you look at all your projects, you take all the things out of your mind and you start assigning them. And you say, okay, this, this thing I said about losing weight, okay, that's bubbling in my mind. What is the next single thing that you can do to get you to that objective? Doesn't have to be big, just something that you can do to take you to the next step and just write it down or allocate it somewhere. So when you write it down, you'll find that as you do this with more and more tasks, you begin to feel more and more in control because it means that no longer are you just going around and around about looking at all the turns. You now signposted it and you've given yourself a, ju- a journey. The, the loop is no longer open. It's you closed it and you said, no, this is the direction we're going. And you do that for lots and lots of different things. You start allocating the journey for those for those tasks. And for some loops, you find that actually you don't want to do anything about it. And it's really empowering to say, you know what? I've got all these journeys. I've only got so many miles in the tank. So I'm going to park that for now. I can do that journey another day. I don't need to use my petrol on this. So you, you just literally write down or store it in another page for the future. And then when it comes to your next review, you review your future items and you say, no, I still don't need that. And you leave it. And there is nothing wrong with that. In fact, some things can go from do it now to I should do that later. And then you allocate it and say, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to put that later. And you just systematically every week, clear your mind, put it on paper, And then you review your objective in your things and you then you review your open loops and you say, huh, that can work really nicely for that goal. And then you don't have any stragglers. You don't have any orphaned ideas or thoughts. Everything is pushing you forward in a way that is meaningful to you as an individual. And that's really, really powerful for me. This is what it's what really helped me get out of dark places, because when you're in those spaces, you feel like you're being swamped and you don't know where you are. You are just in a sea treading water and every thought is weighing down at your ankles. And what you need to do is lighten the load on your ankles by simply acknowledging what's there and then looking around you and finding those spaces of solace. And then you can use those thoughts to build a paddle and just start moving. And you don't need to carry all the weight with you. You can ignore, for me, for example, um, I was really beating myself up about not being able to go to the gym and, and lift more weight and get stronger. And I started thinking, well, it, I'd need to get money for that. I need to do 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 that to try and build a home gym while it's in lockdown. I thought, you know what? I don't need to worry about that right now. I can do a couple of push ups every day. I can go for a walk. I can still exercise in a, in a kind of lighter way. But I don't it isn't helping me right now to think about wanting to to lift the most and become Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's not going to help me. And so just getting that down on paper and say, I was really passionate about lifting weights. I can't really do anything with that right now. I'm going to park that and put it to the side. And then when things open up, I'll go to the gym. There's my action. Don't need to do it now. Park it, put it away, compartmentalize it, stick it in a box. There we go. Don't need to think about it. And then something else that I can do now is I can start working on myself. I can start recording videos, which is something I wanted to do. And I can use my time in a more meaningful way to help drive me. But going back to your disk defragmentation, your mind is a series of data points. And what you're doing with every week that you do this mind sweep is you're just looking at the data, finding where all the loose bits and pieces are, and you're just aligning it. So that when you want to access your thoughts and things, you you can feel confident knowing where they are knowing what needs to happen, knowing what you need to do. And it's a lot more practical than something such as um, like a meditation or a gratitude diary. Uh, so I like to think of it like a mind sweep that you do every week to acknowledge your open loops is your disk defragmentation. Whereas your meditation is clearing your cache. It's deleting your history. It's just pressing the reset button. Now that's good. Definitely a time for that. You should do that once per day. But it's not the same as giving yourself trajectory and purpose and objective. So try it once per week. Go through your open loops, write them down on paper. Give yourself a next tangible action 
signpost your roundabout and say, this is the journey that this particular thing is taking. Give it to yourself, one action. That's all you need. If it takes two minutes, do it then. But the most important thing is that you give those open loops a purpose and don't let them swim in your mind. Because then you can start prioritizing, you can start allocating, and that that C in your mind, you begin to breathe again. You begin to come up and you, oh, whew, okay. I know what's going on in here. I've got it down. And I can see it. And I've got clarity. And that's, it's incredibly valuable. It's helped me. And I hope this can help you. So give it a try. If it helps you, maybe like this video or let me know in the comments if you didn't find it valuable. If you did, I'm really keen to know. And I hope you've enjoyed this. I've been Doug. Toorah.